my name is Chris, and when I was six years old, I was diagnosed with a rare and life-threatening disorder called Hunters, or MPS2. Now, Hunters didn't actually run in my family, and no one ever even heard of it. But once they figured out that I had it, they wanted to test my entire family to see if anyone else was a carrier or had it themselves. And it was determined that my younger brother, who was actually only a few months old, he also had it. But no one else in my family had it. So it turned out that my mother was the carrier. And Hunter's is a sex-linked disorder, meaning that females can carry it, but don't exactly have it. So she never knew she had it. Now, as far back as I could remember, I always knew I had Hunter's. So growing up with it really wasn't that different to me. I had a lot of friends. I even played baseball for a little bit. And then I was actually able to play hockey with the Anaheim Mighty Ducks when I was in fifth grade, which was probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. Growing up with Hunters always seemed pretty normal to me. I mean, as far back as I could remember, I always knew I had it, so I didn't really have a life before it. But there was one question that always lingered in my mind. I always wanted to know how other people dealt with it. How did people affected with the disorder deal with it? How did their family deal with it? How did their siblings deal with it? So to answer this question, this past summer, I spent 90 days on the road, drove approximately 15,000 miles, and stayed with about 40 different families. Now each of these families had one person, or at least one person in that family that had an MPS disorder. A mucopolysaccharidosis, and we kind of said, what? You know, what? What is that? You know, both of us had medical training, but we had no idea what that meant. I think meant they spent maybe two minutes on it in medical school, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it was mentioned somewhere in our medical school training, but, you know. I had to look it up. And, and then, all the parents I speak to, they're always like, the doctors never even heard of it. Right, yeah. right. And now we have proof from doctors, yeah, yeah. like, unless yeah. you're a geneticist, you never heard of it. Yeah, exactly. Never heard of it. Never seen a, a patient with it in any of my medical training. And then when they uh, gave us the name you know, Hunter Syndrome and Mucopolysaccharidosis, we started doing all the Googling online and we saw all these photos of boys that, you know, sort of looked similar to Aiden. Yep. He was diagnosed in July 2010. So about two years ago? Mm hmm about two years ago. Okay, um, what were the signs that made you figure that there was something up? Well, for at least six months uh, prior to that, he had very severe sleep apnea. Um, but the real uh, testing began about a year or so before and it, the the signs that he was displaying were um, extreme delays delays in everything delays in um, uh, crawling and delays in walking um, didn't talk until he was about two um, at a certain point in his um, infancy, I, I started realizing he was looking different, started getting a larger belly, um, started snoring. Um, so in the beginning, I just thought he was snoring and he was getting a big belly and, you know, he was just delayed and, and everything like that. And um, each time he would have a checkup, an 18-month checkup and a 24-month checkup, the doctor said the same thing. Um, at that time, we had finally um, been assigned to a pediatrician. So um, each time he would have his um, developmental screening, he, he, he never passed. You know, he wasn't doing any of the things that were appropriate for his age. To which the doctor referred us to Children's Hospital in LA for hearing and speech and genetic counseling to be done, genetic testing to be done, because she was convinced that he had something called coarse facial features. To, and, and I had no idea what she was talking about. 
Um, neither did she. She she just said, I, I have no idea what, and I believed her. I honestly believed her. She said, um, I know that there has to be something going on here. Um, he's just, he's sick all the time. He's, he, he can't breathe, it appears. Um, you know, he has a very enlarged um, abdomen. You know, those, those are the type of things that she herself um, was was concerned about and then of course I was concerned about the fact that he just just didn't seem to be progressing How old were they when they were diagnosed? Wendy was she had just had her second birthday she was two and Kaylee was six or seven months Okay. Um, were there any signs that Wendy had some type of disorder? She always had things wrong with her. She had sinus infections, but there towards the time that she was diagnosed, her skull had fused closed. She no longer had the fontanelles, and I thought that was odd. And she had like a, a raised area on the back of her neck where the th skin was very thick, and her eyes were getting cloudy, and her hands were really tight, and no one could tell me why. We went to, I think, four different doctors. And you finally went to a geneticist, or? We got a new pediatrician, and we walked into his office because Wendy was so sick. And we had just given up on our pediatrician. And he goes, I think you have bigger things to worry about than the cold. I think she has a storage disorder, and I think it's Hurler syndrome. He actually nailed it without, and he sent us to a geneticist. <laughs> We found out about Jaden in October of 2009, and right after we got his results, Brooklyn was about three months, and so they tested her right away, and so we got both of their results kind of end of October. Now, um, were there any signs that triggered in your head, like there's something going on with your children? Yeah, uh, Jaden, his speech wasn't coming along um, like a lot of his, the kids his age were and uh, so we were a little concerned and we got his hearing checked and um, I, think, I think that's about it and then our pediatrician saw some things that could possibly all be kind of related together um, enlarged liver um, a little bit of a larger head uh, the speech delay so he recommended for us to go see a geneticist so we went down to Children's Memorial in Chicago, and as soon as the geneticist saw him, he knew that he had NPS. We just didn't know what kind. <clears throat> we didn't know what type yet, so that's where we waited three weeks to find out what it was. So, and then, obviously, Brooklyn. Kiss to me to you, won't you say you love me too? Go Biba! 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 Shake it out, girl! With a great big hug and a kiss from me to you, won't you say you love me too? Oh, thank you, Biba!
is so Thank nice. you. Thank you, Oh, mommy and Ange now? Oh, oh, yeah. Did you get some hugs? Angie. Angie. Angie and Mama and Baby. Does Ellie get a hug? Give Ellie a hug. She's spitting up. Oh, nice. Big sister. You want to give her another kiss? But then the, the information I was given by that geneticist when he was two and she walked in and said, oh, he has San Filippo, we need to test him. She handed me this pamphlet and it was a terrible pamphlet. Yes, the It was horrible. It was frightening. It was disturbing. It was something she should have never... Nobody should, that was the wrong information, let's just put it that way. It's not like that at all, but it was very scary. So, so you don't think it's as bad as they say, or it has its moments? It has its moments, but I, John's fought, like I said, for his life forever, so it's nothing new. I know he's a fighter. I know he's going to be, it's going to be what it is. He's going to do the best he can, and I'm certainly him too. When did you first start to realize that there was something a little off about him? When he was a baby, he was sick all the time until he was two years old. And the doctors kept telling us they didn't know what was wrong and calling us in new antibiotics by phone. And then I started looking into my asking family about what was in our family. You actually have hunters in your family, correct? Yes. Do you want to elaborate? <laughs> okay. Um, my mom had two brothers with Hunter syndrome 60-something years ago. And she doesn't really remember because she was three. She has she had 12 siblings, or 11 siblings, and um, they were seven and eight when they passed away. What age was Matthew when he was diagnosed? He was age 8. Okay, and what were the signs? Well, at age 2, he uh, was speaking. So, um, we started to take him to do different doctors to see, you know, if there was anything wrong with him or anything. If he had any um, learning disabilities or something. He wasn't progressing like the other kids. So we started at the age of two, um, pediatrician, then we went to a um, developmental pediatrician from age two to age five. They saw him every six months, never diagnosed him with anything other than maybe a speech and language disorder they told us he had. Um, then from there we went to the Kennedy Krieger Center, we went down to New Jersey to see a specialist there. No one diagnosed anything other than um, he's got, um, he was mildly mentally retarded. Uh, and then uh, at the age of eight, we, uh, at the suggestion of my mother, decided that we should go see a geneticist because to rule out something like Fragile X or something like that. And we didn't even consider a uh, recessive genetic disorder because nothing ran in the family or any other side so we thought well, all right we'll just go to rule that out and that's when they picked up a urine test it was slightly high for um, sugar and and then they took the blood and they found the diagnosis when did you guys start to realize that they had some kind of disorder, something medically wrong with them. Jared would probably be, he was five? Four or five maybe? Not so much the medical part, but... Something different. Yeah. We knew something cognitively was going on. So the that first... Was, that's, that's the 11 year old. So uh, probably, mm -hmm. yeah, six years ago. Preschool to kindergarten age. Mm -hmm. So the first sign was mental, not physical? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to get him diagnosed? Five, five years. years. <laughs> Four or five years, yeah. 
to get him diagnosed, so mm -hmm. he was undiagnosed until last year. Yep. yep. First thing they thought in uh, kindergarten was autism. They checked, they, we, you know, did some autism uh, rating scales and stuff, some testing. He was observed by an autism specialist and she She said ruled that, that out right away. Yeah, she said that he had some characteristics that were similar, but that he didn't fall on the scale. Then they went from that to ADD, to anxiety, to a number of different things before they eventually landed on this because of his enlarged liver. Mm -hmm. Just at a random yearly checkup with a doctor she felt in the large liver. So went to a specialist in Grand Rapids and that's how they found out. Did a liver biopsy and then went from there. Okay, and from that, how did you figure out your other son also had it? Uh, other son had his kindergarten hearing screen. Mm -hmm. Well, pre kindergarten. His, his screening to get into kindergarten, his hearing test, and he failed that. So we took him in to get tested just to rule him out because he doesn't really show a whole lot of the signs. And so he got that. Sign backwards, Caleb. Backwards, Caleb. Caleb, backwards, Caleb. Caleb, backwards. Brother. Backwards. <laughs> Are you going to be the catcher? Huh? Are you okay, be better, better. Oh, I'll, I'll we'll play. Close. What's your name? Come on, better, 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 better. Here we go, better, better, better. Oh. <laughs> Grandpa. <laughs> Miss Tim. Come on, Come on, Taylor. Come on, Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about, I'm Watch out. Jared, back up, buddy. Back up. Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're okay. Here goes. All right, here you go. Oh, nice hit, buddy. Here you go. Whoa. This young lady is 19 years old, and she shows none of the physical signs of anyone else I've met with an MPS disorder. That just shows you that although these disorders are all related, your body can react completely differently to them. I'm Ted McCannon. Susan McCannon. We're Casey McCannon's grandparents and guardian. Okay, and Casey is how old? Casey is 19 and she has MPS 3A. How long ago did you guys find out about it? She was 15 before she was diagnosed correctly. What did they think it was? Uh, they thought, well, the first diagnosis, of course, was ADHD before preschool, or during preschool. And then um, we knew she was uh, somewhat mentally challenged, somewhat a little bit slow. But then you guys started to notice a regression. Yeah, she got... A little progressed along in school and stuff and we noticed regression which wasn't typical of what they were trying to tell us was wrong with her and then we realized um, that uh, the diagnosis was wrong and it took us many doctors in a period of 15 years to really come up with an answer. Okay, um, I've noticed by interacting with her that she has absolutely none of the physical features that are common with any MTS. Yeah, after she was diagnosed, we come to find out later through testing that the uh, gene mutations that she carries are a mild form of gene mutations. Oh, you missed it.